Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Adobe Illustrator scripting tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you all about stroke and fill and gradients inside of Illustrator. These are very common things that we can access, such as modifying the fill and stroke colors of our entire document, or specifically down into fill and stroke colors for specific objects and layers. So in this tutorial, we're just going to be going over how to access all of these, how to change them, and a few other goodies. Before we get started, I do want to remind you down below hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel and down in the description you can follow us on github to get updates on code and follow us on instagram to get other cool updates as well if you haven't already joined our discord server you can get help with scripting extensions plugins expressions and much more and if you want to help support the channel on youtube you can become a member supporter premium supporter or vip to get cool perks and help us out so we're going to be making this script today that basically reads an open document and we're going to set up whether or not uh, this has a default fill or stroke enabled and we're going to specifically be able to change what those stroke and fills are so any element you create by default will have the settings you select. We're also going to look at getting some information regarding gradients. And with this information, you'll be able to go off and start adjusting your documents, layers, and applying gradients to things and starting to explore the more complex objects within. So I'm going to create a new JavaScript extended file. And the first thing I'm going to do is define a document as my app.active document. And this just represents whatever document, assuming there is one open, is inside of Illustrator here. And if you ever want to know if you really have a document selected, you could just say alert document or alert document.name and you can see we'll get the actual title of our document. So with our document, we can have access to a lot of things, the layers inside of it and all sorts of other useful things, including over here, the fill and stroke colors, as well as whether or not by default it has a color or if it's disabled or has a gradient. So now what we can do is actually decide whether or not the stroke and fill are default uh, having a color or if they're empty and have this slash through them. The way we're gonna do this is by grabbing our document and grabbing the default filled. We're also gonna grab our document and grab the default stroked. Now we can give this either a true or false. If we want it to be disabled, give it a false. And if you want it to be enabled, give it a true. So if I go ahead and just uh, add both of these here and run my script, you can see it's going to enable my fill, which I set to true, and make sure my stroke is disabled and has this cross through it. If we want, we can actually set up a custom color, uh, whether it's a CMYK or an RGB color, to decide what color that default will be. So if I create a new color and set this equal to a new RGB color object, we can then set the red channel of our color the green channel of our color and finally the blue channel and this will be based on 0 to 255 values instead of 0 to 1 which is a more normalized value so let's just say in this case we want like a, a blue color I'm gonna say 0 for red maybe like 30 to 50 for green and a very high number for the blue now if I want to change what the default color appears to be here uh, it's currently white, we can set it actually. So I'm going to say document dot default fill color is equal to our color object we just created. And this will then set it equal to that blue color that I just created. And of course, you can go in and switch these up if I wanted to change the uh, stroke color to be enabled and make the fill disabled. I could also say document dot default stroke color instead of fill color. And this will allow me to make my stroke color that color or disable my fill. One more quick tip regarding the stroke is if I create an object, you can see it has uh, a certain default uh, stroke. If I go and check out the stroke window, you can see it's set to one. What I can also do is set the default stroke width. So if I grab my document dot default stroke width, we can set it to maybe like 10 to make it very noticeable. And if I run this, you can see it's going to automatically update any shape I have there. It updated the stroke in that case because I had it selected. But if you uh, have it deselected, you can just set it back to the original. But again, if you run this and have it selected, it will update the stroke uh, that you have selected as well, as well as the default stroke for the whole document. Now, the last thing we're going to look at in this video is gradients. Now, gradients have their own objects within itself that we can take a look at. 
We're first going to look at the gradients object, which will give us a list of all the gradients in our current document. So we can access this. Uh, we'll create a variable called gradients, and we'll set this equal to our document.gradients. And then let's go ahead and just grab the first gradient. So I'll say gradient one is equal to our gradients index zero. So you can see down here, if I grab any index of my gradients, it's gonna give me a gradient object. So that's what this gradient one is representative of, an individual gradient, which with that, we have the stops of the gradient, the name of the gradient, the parent, the type, and uh, the ability to remove it. And there's also a nice code example you can follow along with as well. What we're interested in is getting these gradient stops. So what we can do is say, bar stops is equal to our gradient one, and we're going to grab the gradient stops. Now, if I go ahead and alert my stops, let's see what we get. We're just going to get an object of type gradient stops. So back inside the guide, if we check out what we can access with our gradient stops, we have the length of it, the parent, the type name, add and get by name. But we also have an index of all the stops. So let's check what the length of our stops is. We're gonna have two stops in total. So let's go ahead and loop through them and see what we can further get out of it. So I'm gonna say var i is equal to zero and i is less than our stops.length increment i by one. And for each gradient stop, we can now go into the gradient stop object. We can access the color, the midpoint, the opacity, and some other information. So let's go ahead and just write these out into the console. We'll grab our stops i dot color, duplicate it a few times. Let's go ahead and grab the midpoint, grab the opacity and the ramp point. And now if we go ahead and run this, you can see we're going to first get a CMYK color object from our stop color, the midpoint of our gradient, 50, so straight in the middle, and then 100 for the opacity and ramp point. You can then take all this information and start to modify and create your own gradients by creating each different color of stops. So maybe your first stop is white, your second stop is black, and that's gonna be your gradient transition. So you can go in and adjust all the properties of the individual stops, which overall compose the entire gradient of your entire document. So there's a little bit of bonuses there with the uh, gradients and the stops that you can access. In the future, we may do more in depth on that as we create more practical Illustrator scripts. But that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. That's how to deal with stroke, fill, and gradients inside of Adobe Illustrator scripting. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button, and down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. Down in the description, you can follow us on GitHub and Instagram to get updates on when videos go live and cool other updates. Be sure to join our Discord server and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. And of course, help support the YouTube channel by becoming a member, supporter, premium supporter, or a VIP and get cool perks along the way. Thanks again for watching everyone. We'll see you next time.